Hi, Rob Hartman here. Let me introduce you to RPEQ. As you might notice by looking at this video about RPEQ, is that it has an uncommon feature compared to other EQs. Indeed, it has the XY pad, which you also can find inside our synthesizers, plate, Bluetooth, and RAW. The XY section makes RPEQ truly unique, but there are also more features inside RPEQ which makes it a great go-to equalizer for mixing and mastering your music. Features are needed, but the most important aspect of EQ is the sound of it. I truly believe that we offer a natural warm sounding EQ with a silky sound. Let me first show you the sections that you can find inside RPEQ and these I will explain in more detail later on. In the upper section we have the presets and banks and the XY screen can be opened and closed here. During EQing you often like to try out things. So each preset also offers additional A and B settings so that you can compare them. Closing the XY screen makes the spectrum analyzer visible and at the right side the controls for it. Exactly below the spectrum analyzer we have the 8-band EQ which offers regular EQ mode and mid-side EQ mode. The EQ is graphic but also with controls below it to have additional control and fine-tuning options. On the right side you can find saturation which can be compared to tape saturation. Also air function which is great on the master or for lifting up the main vocals in your music. While mixing you often need a high pass filter for removing the low rumble or a low pass filter for the high disturbing frequencies. This you can find here with several filter types. For mixing and mastering contemporary music the mono stereo split filter is often an essential tool. And of course there is this XY pad which you can address to most of RPEQ its parameters which is awesome to do some creative EQ work. Let me go now more into detail and let's start with the Spectrum Analyzer. You can switch on off this section by clicking on this icon. If you don't use the Spectrum Analyzer in your work simply close it as it will save CPU. Inside the screen itself you can select the three types of view lines, bars or peak only. The right side arranges the other controls like input, output or both view. There's also a freeze function. Mode sets the channels you want to view, left, right, stereo or the mid-side mode. In mid-side mode the upper section is the mid part and the lower section is the side part. Of course for this the EQ mode should be in mid-side mode, which is the case if you see this icon active and the letters M behind the bands 1 until 4 and the letter S behind the bands 5 until 8. Then there are three dials and which the first one is the gain boost control. The hold and release arranges the response of the peak lines. Note that while being in the line mode, the hold doesn't respond and only the release control. Below the spectrum analyzer we can find the 8-band EQ which can work in two modes or bypass. If you click on the icon you can switch between normal mode, which is the 8-band EQ and in this box you can select the bands you want to add it with the lower control parts. Mid-side mode EQ, which means that band 1 until 4 are the mid-signal EQ parts and the bands 5 until 8 are the side EQ parts. You can see at the icon or at the letters behind the bands if you are in the mid-side mode. The third mode is off, which is still valid with RPQ in case you only want to use the other features like saturation, air, filter or the mono stereo split filter. 
As you can see, the EQ section is divided in two parts, the graphic part and the section with the control buttons and dials. Why we did this will be clear very soon. The upper section you can edit using your mouse, and in addition, the mouse wheel can be used to control the bandwidth. Alternatively, you can also use the computer control key for changing the bandwidth. Editing with the mouse in a graphic EQ is not always precise, so therefore we added dials in the lower section. Next to the handy feature that values are displayed, you can also make finer adjustments by using the computer's shift key while changing the parameter. This allows for more precise settings. If you go to preset 1, Another reason pops up why we added the lower section. The preset is a lineup from a classic channel EQ, found for instance at my own studio mixer. By using the lock feature for frequency, I can adjust the high filter and low filter without changing the frequency by accident. So band 2 and 4 are used for making a classic low and high filter setup. Bands 1 and 3 are free and can be used to sweep frequency bands. So these Ana Mixer range of presets are great on a channel for having a classic analog mixer style setup. Oh yes, uh, if you miss the high pass filter, just look to the right. Just click it on to have it effective. But let's stay in the EQ section because I haven't told everything. Here you can select which band you want to edit, band 1 until 4 or band 5 until 8. To avoid unnecessary CPU power, each band can be turned on off. And in case you use all the 8 bands and these are close to each other, you can shut them off for being visual in the upper section or alternatively you can use solo. There is also another solo in the bandwidth section, and this is an audio solo of the active bandwidth. Last but not least reminds me to mention about the EQ section that instead of frequency, you also can select MIDI node for selecting the frequency that you want to change. Great for contemporary music and boosts a certain bass note in your track. But also handy if at a given moment one note in the music is irritating. Now let's move over to the right hand section of RPQ and the other features inside this plugin. Saturation. The saturation section applies a warm effect to the sound based on the effect of saturated analog tape recordings. Note that this is a very detailed change to the sound. The pre button arranges how the saturation section may be placed, either before the EQ section or at the last part. Air. The air section represents an additional EQ band, which works as a booster of very high frequencies with a wide bandwidth. This effect is perceived as giving the audio a bit more breathing room in the mid and top end. It works exceptionally well on a mastering channel or to fresh up older recordings. The air section can also be put to good use when applied to a lead voice to bring it out in the mix a bit more. Use your own ears to find the right setting using the frequency dial and the amount dial. Filter. 
A classic use of cutoff filters inside a mixer channel is of course the high pass filter. They are mainly used for removing the low rumble on your track and often set to a cutoff frequency of 75 Hz. Let's go to preset 2, which is a classic build up of a mixer channel. Just by clicking on the filter, you add a classic high pass filter cutoff at 75 Hz. Essentially, such a filter can be compared to a synthesizer high pass filter. Only a synthesizer filter has more controls. Of course, we love features, so we added some additional ones, like 12 dB or 24 dB filter types, and both appearing in two sound character types. Also, next to the cutoff, the resonance is added. And to make it even more complete, we also added a low pass filter, which is great to remove high frequencies. Also in 12 dB and 24 dB, and with two types of sound characters, and with cutoff and resonance. This filter inside RPEQ can be used as classic mixer filter, but is essentially a synthesizer filter setup, which means that there is far more freedom and great in combination with the XY pad, if you like to be creative. Mono Stereo Split Filter. This feature is very popular in modern contemporary music. To get a tight low end, you select a frequency and below this the audio is mono. You can select the frequency here, but also can use note value to set your split point. With solo, you can solo the mono audio signal, and with visual, you can make the split point visual in the spectrum analyzer. The modes makes you select the mono signal, and most obvious is the use of the first three modes, depending on your taste. Now let's go back to the upper section where you can select the XY pad. This is a truly unique feature of RPEQ and also makes RPEQ a creative effects plugin. If you select this bank, you can find some good examples using the XY section. Note that this XY turns blue if a preset uses the XY pad. So even if the XY pad is closed, this indicator shows that the XY pad is active in the current preset. The XY pad needs to be turned on by clicking on this icon. And of course, you need to have targets active inside the XY here. There are a lot of features inside this section. And I must also point out reading the user guide PDF which can be opened if you click the question mark or help icon. I will point out some important things you need to know. On the right side, you select the targets for the X or Y movement. The way the movements are arranged, you select here. The live mode is for doing the movements yourself using the mouse. Of course, this can be recorded inside your music host program. But for this, check the host software manual on how it's done. Direct means that you can record the movement yourself. And by pressing replay, it is replayed. This movement is stored within the preset. At command, you will find a lot of additional features, included the option to make the movement visible or not. And also presets movement can be selected here, and much more. Movements can be synced to your music host program, so it will be tempo based. For this, select the sync box for a musical value. Of course, because you use RPEQ as a fix, you need to tell it when it needs to start. For this, we have several modes, 
of which the free mode is the standard one. If you hit play in your music program, the movement starts to play. To keep the correct timing, wise to start at the first beat of the bar. The other modes are note, which means that you have to connect a MIDI note by starting the movement. The last mode is button, which means that you have to press the button to start the movement, but also to stop the movement. The button can be recorded as parameter inside your music host program, but for how this works, please check your music program manual. There are also other menu boxes inside the XY section, like time quantize and so on. For this, check the user guide, please, for detailed info. As you notice, the XY section makes RPEQ become a powerful FX unit. Great for some creative stuff. Let me show you some remaining parts of RPEQ. In the top section, you can find an icon called ECS. This is for saving or loading your external MIDI controller setup. There's also an icon called Auto Volume, and this is a feature that can be turned on off. If it is on and you EQ a lot, it could happen that the audio channel goes above the 0 dB and clips. This we like to avoid, of course, so the volume dial is automatically corrected if it happens. If you go less extreme, you can turn up the volume again, of course. Note that this is not a limiter, because limiters also change the sound of the audio. This is something to be avoided, of course, because you do EQ the sound and that is all you want to change. To avoid clipping of the channel, we added this and it has no influence at all on the sound itself. Above the volume, you can find the bypass button, which is very important, of course, to hear the difference between the original sound and the sound after EQ. By the way, most of these sections have internal presets as well. Check the label EQ, for instance, and click on it. You can see presets for this EQ section and also can save your own EQ settings. Same goes for saturation, air, filter, mono stereo split filter and the XY section. Last but not least, I like to show you the back panel. If you click at the RP logo, you can open it. Here you can set some additional global settings for RP EQ. Of course, the back panel holds the regular warning, which we add to all our plugins to avoid climate change. Enjoy RP EQ.